I don't think initially I thought that I would become a New York City expert. I was going to teach urban history. Well, I'm from, you know, really kind of Memphis, Tennessee, from the city itself. But, you know, really, if you were from, from New York, you'd think it was a suburb. And I thought, if I'm going to be taken seriously as an urban historian, shouldn't I have lived in a real city or lived in an apartment building at some point in my life? And so when I had the chance to come to New York, I thought, well, I want to live in an apartment building. I want to look down and look down on the city. And that was part of it. I didn't expect to stay or want to stay. New York may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it may be one out of five people's cup of tea, and clearly I was one of those people. I've been at Columbia for, this is my 49th year. Nobody would build a water system like New York has now. I um, now would be best known for a large lecture course I teach on New York City history. I mean, even though I test some facts, I realize in 30 years that I can remember most of that. But what they might remember is, first of all, a sense of the city, and in the best sense of the word, a place that, that um, imparts freedom to people. You know, whatever you want to do in New York allows you to do that. And I want to convince them that New York has a special role in America, that even if you don't go there, you never go back, uh, it's important for us that it be there, that there's a place in this country where you know that you can go and you'll be accepted, that you can find people like yourself, no matter how strange or weird you are. So you can see a few changes in Harlem, new construction, beer garden over there, outdoor restaurants over here. First of all, I'm trying to get Columbia students out of Manhattan. We're all in a rut. And even though we live in this giant city of eight and a half million people in 450 neighborhoods, and we don't know many other places. So I want people to at least spend some time in Brooklyn or the Bronx or Queens as long as they're here. You need to go there. It's not, you know, you have to make an effort. Well, the bike ride grew out of the fact that I wanted to, I did walking tours. The walking tours were limited by how much ground you can cover, you, which is not a whole lot, even if you're in better shape then than I am now. So we have many bikers, usually 200, give or take, I've had 300. We're together in a group. It is a kind of a communal experience. Well, you know, it's exhilarating. You know, people say, I can't stay up all night. Well, the truth is you get an adrenaline rush. It's such a unique experience. Our next stop is pretty close. It's great. We're already in Greenwich Village. But we're gonna... To feel the city, to experience the city at night, you almost feel its warmth. You almost feel like you own the city, you can love it, the city. I think I've tried to take Columbia students, the people I've encountered, and say, you know, there's something special about this city and I'm gonna to try to convince you of it. And obviously, I don't convince everybody, but if I convince half of them, and if I change the lives of five or 10 of them, which I think I do. So I think that's what a professor can be, an inspiration, you, you can, excite people. The facts can come later, but they want to be excited about something. So that's what I hope I do, not lose my enthusiasm for the place that I first found when I was in my 20s and now I'm in my 70s. And I was enthusiastic then and I think I still am.